G'day tubers, thought I'd update ya. I actually have something to do this time. Got my shirt in the mail. I like it, I like this one better than the other one. I like brighter colors. But the other one's black with black writing and you can hardly see it. It's almost not worth it. So 80 bucks, kind of happy. So what am I doing today? I got a whole bit of these. Little clippy things. Uh, plan is to make a balancer. Now I can make a, I could just go down and disconnect it all and balance it down there, but I'm gonna bring it up here. I'm gonna put it on the bench. I'm gonna bring all the battery packs up because it's gonna be the easiest way to actually do a battery voltage before and after. So you can see that one, it works, how long it actually takes to work and how far out the balance this battery bank is. Oh yeah. So disconnect this pack and this pack, take them up the shed, see how balanced they are or unbalanced they are. That's another little thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to actually drill this hole out a half a millimetre more to make this slide in there much easier and make it easier to pull it apart and put it back together again. Not required, but I think it'll make it life a lot easier. Okay, so that's taken me 10 minutes to undo the bolts. Not at all horrible. Let us get it up to the shed and get it balanced. Okay, we've got the bank up here now in the workshop. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick voltage on all of these. Now I could have very easily done the voltages down in the shed, but I wanted to actually show you what the voltages were. Now I've charged it back up to 4.1 volts or close enough to it, because that's where I balanced it from originally. So let's run through each, each cell and see what we've got. 4.19, that's a little bit high. 4.11, 4.07, 4.09, 4.6, 4.8, 4.1, 4.8, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, Let's have a look at this one again. This one was a high one. 4.19. Oh, that's pack. That's the 14th cell in the top pack. So I'm gonna have to look at that one to see whether that one needs replacing or it's of a lower quality. Maybe that's why it's out of balance. Maybe it just needs a good balance. So I'll keep an eye on that one. Right yeah. now let's hook up the balance cables. Actually, let's make the balance cables. Uh, there we go, the finished product. Not that pretty, but you know what? I don't need pretty. There's 10 bucks, well, five bucks, five bucks worth of wire and 15 bucks worth of clamps. And um, it should make it very easy and very quick and a little bit safer to balance it up. And what I was doing before was soldering them all up and it didn't like that. So let's put this together, see how it goes. I got a bit lazy and it was it was fairly, it was pretty much spot on last night, late last night. And I just, I was too tired. So as you can see there, we're going back to battery. So with one pack there, it doesn't last us quite all night once we throw the toaster on and stuff in the morning. So I have to get this all set up and ready to go. Now, my battery's also going flat on my multimeter. I just did every single cell and that's actually just one end to the other there. I just did every cell and they are all spot on for um, 0.1 volts which is what you would expect because they're all charged to 4.1 box. Now that one there was high and I can't remember which one was low, but I'll keep an eye on that pack anyway. It's probably a low capacity, lower capacity pack or may have some issues. Um, as you can see this time, I've um, put cardboard in between each one. So I didn't die from smoke inhalation. inhalation. Um, I've also gone through and done another manual check on every single um, connection and there was um, none broken this time, which is good. But then again, I was handling them much, much more carefully and not trying to get it in. So the worst part about this reinstall is the 14th pack. Right down here in this corner. 
there's not much room. <laughs> bit of poor design on my behalf. If I ever if I ever get a chance, I'll be building a bigger shed in here. But this bolt here, which is the negative terminal, has to be done up right here. And it's single biggest design flaw of this whole idea. So let's get this oh, the final this the rest of this in and get it back online again. Oh, there we go. That took a little bit longer than expected. Um, I just wanted to make sure I was doing it right. Buttoned everything up, tightened everything up, double checked everything. Bring it all back online again. Now, this one, this bank here is at 4.1. This bank here underneath it is at 3.8 after last night. Um, but they'll just balance each other out. So then I'll, when this bottom pack comes up to 4.1 again, I'll disconnect it and do the same thing I did. Except I'll do it in here, I'm not going to cart it all out again, so that'll be much faster. So, put that back in again. Always makes a little bit of spark, but I guess that's just because of the amps going through it. So, put that back on nice and quick. All nice and pretty again. Can't wait to get that next pack down there. Right, go into the power shed, which is all turned off. The only, only modifications I've made is I've started fitting this cable properly and I've drilled a whole heap of holes all along the bottom. Well, I haven't gone all the way along the bottom yet because my battery went flat. But they're 32 mil holes just with a stepper drill bit all the way through. And that's surprising how much cooler that makes this shed. Um, and then the air just comes... Uh, can you even see? Not really. Up there there's a, there's a gap to the outside. And the air just rushes through, and there's a few um, a few cobwebs just here, and they just rattle around like crazy. So you can see that it's ripping the air through, and the shed stays a lot cooler. Okay, so that's back on again. We'll turn the power switch on. There we go. The inverter turns on. Well, we've done a fuse for the Victron Energy Monitor, that's fine. I'm going to replace the fuse because that often happens when you're changing it around. Turn that computer back on again. Easy box, that's what I use as a NUC. Little tiny Intel and Easy Box thing. It's small. Right, let's flick this back over. And that'll give us some solar. Start up repair. I shut you down properly, you go away. Start normally. Enter. Rightio. Now, to recommission this again, because that we, we had to transfer over to grid power, I'll take you around to the power box and I'll show you how we do that again quickly. Okay, so we're back at, at my, um, my switchboard now. Um, and basically this one here is my changeover. So the top is mains and the bottom is gen set. So all I do is flick it backwards and forwards, walking around the house first, turn off as many of the loads as possible, flick it over, walk back in, turn everything on, and we're back off grid again. Well, hybrid. Hybrid, I guess you'd call it. So, there you go. That's how that's done. G'day, Tubers. Thanks for watching through to the end. Um, I'd like to say a big shout out to all the new subscribers. We've got a few lately. Um, and to all the contributors to my channel with Patreon and um, donations. Cheers. Thank you very much. It really helps. I spent a whole bunch of money on some new plastic clips the other day. Um, and those little clippy things and stuff I use with the, pay uh, with the PayPal money. So, Thanks guys. Um, also, this is the black shirt, 18650. You can hardly sort of see it, so yeah, doesn't matter. Um, I'm really enjoy. I'm really enjoying all the interaction with all the guys out there, with all the people out there. There's a couple of girls on my channel um, with all the people out there. And you know, if you've got something to ask, whatever, drop it in the comments below. Or if you're Facebook inclined, I know some of you just aren't. Um, head on over to the Facebook um, group DIY Power Walls and um, join us, join the conversation over there. There's lots of good information, um, lots of conflicting interests, which is always good for discussion, um, safety and all that sort of stuff. It's all good. If you've got something to sell, feel free to do it on my channel. If you've got something to do whatever on Facebook, do it there. And I have bought a bunch of domain names, so I will look into doing a forum on a hosted server. Um, I have a couple of advantages. People that don't like Facebook, it'll hook all them up, which will be good. Extra audience. Um, 
Also, it'll make a it'll make for a lot better sense doing thread builds and stuff like that. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one, guys. And thanks so much. Cheers.